Hello. Does anybody recognize this one? Anyone? Does anybody recognize this one? Anyone? Oh, come on. This is a tooth of a great white shark. One of the most dangerous apex predators in the oceans. Well, that's at least what we think. And this one. This is an exact tooth replica from a 67 foot long gigantic killing machine. You may be familiar with it. And unfortunately, it was extinct 3.6 million years ago. This is an exact tooth replica of a megalodon shark. Before 420 million years ago, Mother Nature made her new invention. They have no bone, it's a superstructure. They're fast and they have a massive amount of teeth. They are sharks. The first shark, Agalostopus, lived in the Silurian period 420 million years ago. Now, this ocean shark predator has evolved into more than 1,000 species, all different sizes, colors, diets, and behavior. Sharks are a subclass called Elismobranchae, which means they have skeletons made of cartilage and not bone. I am very interested in sharks. Sharks are extraordinary animals. From the whale shark, the largest fish on earth that can grow to more than 55 feet, to the dwarf phantom shark, which is a mere eight inches. Sharks are found from shallow to deep sea, coastal, marine, and oceanic environments. A few species come up easily to salt, fresh, and brackish waters through a process called osmoregulation. One of these species are bull sharks. Like I said before, sharks are extraordinary animals. Even the reproduction types are different. Sharks have four types of reproduction. Yes, four types. Not only a few ha animals have this. The first, eggling. Sharks lay these small, uniquely shaped egg cases at the, at the ocean bottom, which are clinged on to seaweed or some sort of coral. And when the Young shark hatches out of the egg case, the egg case just floats away up to the beach. And one of the most commonest egg cases found on beaches are cat shark egg cases or mermaid's purses. And the other three types are live birth, birthing live pups, and, and the most extraordinary one, shark reproduction without mating. So when we take a look at a shark skin, do you think of it as soft and as smooth as ours? No, it's not. Do they have scales? Hmm, let me think for a second. No, sharks don't even have scales. Then what do they have? Instead, they're replaced with dermal tentacles. These are tiny, tooth-like structures on the shark skin, which helps them move really fast with no sound at all. And some divers have been injured very badly by just bumping on a shark. So sharks contain a very interesting subject and one of my favorite subjects in the oceans. They contain bioluminescence. Yes, sharks do have bioluminescence. A few species of sharks has this and so do other species of rays. Lantern sharks, swirl sharks, and the last but not least, megamount sharks. And the interesting fact is, they have their bioluminescence inside their mouths. Yes, inside their mouths. How many sensors do you have? You have five sensors. Then how many do you think a shark has? Sharks? have seven senses. Yes, seven senses. 
many species of sharks has brains as complex as those of mammals, enabling them to possess a wide range of senses. They have extra two senses. Electro reception. With the help of the ampule of Lorenzini in the tip of the noses, sharks can detect low electrical impulses from very far away. And the other one, pressure changes, which includes the lateral line. Sharks have a lateral line system along the sides which detects water movements. Actually, sharks are eco-balancers. They are a keystone species. Now, think of Stonehenge and the keystone. The keystone is the thing holding everything up. And if we remove that keystone, the whole hinge collapses. Sharks act as this keystone, and if they be removed from the environment, the whole ecosystem collapses. As apex predators, sharks play an important role in the ecosystem by maintaining the species below them in the food chain and serving as an indicator for ocean health. They help remove the weak and sick, as well as keeping balance with competitors, helping to ensure species diversity. One day, I went to the fish market and saw a lot of dead sharks. Many had their fins cut and they were bleeding. It was such a sad and gruesome sight for me. And another day, I saw a large and majestic manta ray having its gill rakers ripped off. I was so heartbroken about it. The way that people kill and destroy these amazing and harmless marine animals. In my country, Sri Lankan waters are home to 63 species of sharks and 42 species of rays. But sadly, most are threatened. Blue sharks, silky sharks, mako sharks, hammerhead sharks, and many other more are killed or bycatch for shark fins, meat, and liver oil. An estimated 100 million sharks are killed every year by humans alone. Sharks may not be a significant threat to us, but we are to them. Like I said before, an estimated 100 million sharks are killed by humans every year. And only six humans or less are killed by sharks every year. So now we view sharks as man-killing monsters. But don't sharks view us as shark-killing monsters? Well, from my personal information, that's a hundred percent true. So humans are responsible for drastic declines in shark populations. Now, I'm telling a different story. It all started when I was just four years old. I wanted to come, become an astronaut, go to outer space and find aliens. Such a normal and wild imagination at that age, right? But actually, I studied astronomy for a while, until I was four, until the day. I heard of a new species being discovered, an alien-like species, right here on our own planet, deep down in the Pacific Ocean. And then I thought, when there are so many more undiscovered creatures to be discovered, why should we go look out for aliens millions of light years away in different planets when we have aliens on our own planet? I thought about that. And well, that's true. And just 5% of our oceans have been explored and charted, especially the oceans below the surface. And I think more of Mars' surface has been mapped than our own oceans. Then I read books, especially marine biology. I studied about species. I watched videos and documentaries about the oceans and especially Sir David Arable's fins. Then I wanted to teach other people about how to predict the oceans and why. Because the oceans are one of the most important things on our planet. 50 
to 80% of the oxygen produced on Earth comes from our oceans, from phytoplankton, kelp, and algal plankton. Most of these are tiny, microscopic plants that cannot be seen to the naked human eye, but can be seen from far away in outer space. And they produce more oxygen than our own rainforest. Then I made videos. I drew art to give the message to people. I won many art competitions worldwide. I do many things to protect our oceans. For example, I'm writing my first book called My Ocean Giants, which will be published next year. And you can read it hopefully. In 2019, I joined the Young Marine Biological Association in the UK as a young marine biologist in age eight. In 2020, I became an, an ambassador in the Marine Conservation Network in Santa Barbara, California. So I can interview world's top marine biologists, researchers, students worldwide using my YouTube channel called My Kids Lab. So I joined these many, many conservations to break sharks before it's too late. After that, I started a nonprofit organization to speed ocean science and knowledge all around the world. In 2020, I started my research about river sharks in Sri Lanka and why they're coming from the rivers to the oceans. And I became a global new shark ambassador to protect sharks. So I thought to myself, what can I do to protect these amazing marine animals? And I finally made the SL Shark Kids for conservations for sharks and the voice of the kids to save sharks. We don't need grown-ups to stand up and do everything for us. We can do them ourselves. One small person can make a really big difference and we don't need to wait any longer. What can you do to protect sharks? What can we all do? Simple, and there's many, many things you can do. You can learn as much as you can about sharks. Do not use shark products. Reduce your seafood consumption. Use the reduce, reuse, recycle methods for pollution. Talk to your local educators. Donate and volunteer with your shark conservation organizations. Speak out when you see abuse. Go diving with sharks to learn their true nature. When we use these methods, we can save sharks for the next generation and many, many generations to come. As a shark ambassador, I give advice to my friends, family and community to protect sharks and do something. Don't just sit on your comfy chair feeling sorry. If you want to save sharks, then take action. Let's save sharks for the next generation. Thank you.